here. I've got to start this. All right. Come on, you silly thing. So I'm not exactly sure how we're going to go about it. Um, it's possible that we could just do this through discussions. Um, I know this isn't showing on your screens, but if you see mine, um, and discussions would allow students to check in with the teacher and he can put a link to a video or some other curriculum that you guys can follow the link to get there. So this may be the way to do it. Um, I, I dislike some of the drawbacks of Big Blue Button. Um, it, it doesn't record, it records, but it only holds the recording for seven days and then it loses it. There's a few other drawbacks that I don't like about it. So I'm gonna try and figure out how this is going to happen and I will let you guys know um, next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, okay? So um, in other words, I'm gonna tell you every day what the final plan is. And I'm also gonna have an announcement um, on the pages uh, the following week as to what you need to do, okay? Um, in other words, like I've been saying from the beginning, you guys need to please check the announcements to make sure there's not a new one there, to make sure if there's something there, you gotta make sure you know how to get to this class. It's gonna be a little different for a week, okay? So I apologize for this, but I have no choice. It's a conference um, and it's one of those things. So the week, uh, the week that you come back from Thanksgiving break is going to be a little bit odd. Let's just keep that in mind. Um, and hopefully things will go swimmingly and we won't have a problem, okay? So let's go ahead and get started on these two videos. Um, like I said, um, don't freak out if the video pauses at some point because it just means I wanna make a comment about it. Also, if we've had some issues in the past with students that had um, videos, you know, not running smoothly or something like that. One of the things you can do is if you have any open tabs um, on your on your computer, go ahead and close any other tabs. Okay, that'll help a little bit. And oddly enough, it you know it does sometimes help to shut the system down and turn it back on. Okay, so let's take a look at this first one and see what we've got. And if at any time during any of the videos you see in this class. Um, if for some reason you don't get sound or something's not right, just say something in the chat to me so that I know there's an issue because I don't see any issues you might have from my side, okay? Thank you, Jocelyn, it's okay. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and start with this first one. And don't freak out if the movie, pa if the movie, if the video pauses. Today's video is a big one and a subject I've gotten a lot of questions on over the years, the jointer. We all know the saying, start square, finish square, and the jointer takes no prisoners. If it isn't set up right, or you're using the wrong technique, you won't end up square, and you'll be left with nothing but frustration. So let's go over how the jointer works and techniques to get perfectly straight and square material. For this video, I've removed some of the safety guards to show how the jointer works. Make sure you use all safety guards with your jointer. There are four main parts to the jointer. The in-feed table, the out-feed table, the fence, and the cutter head. Now this video is not about setting up your jointer. That will be another video. But before you use the jointer, here's what needs to be done. First is to make sure the in-feed and out-feed tables are coplanar. That means when the in-feed table is at the same level as the out-feed table, both tables are in a straight line from one end to the other. When you lower the infeed table, the tables are no longer coplanar, but they must be parallel. This is critical. Next, the knives must be set at the same height as the outfeed table or within one thousandths higher. You do not want the knives set lower than the outfeed table. And last, you need to adjust the fence to 90 degrees. Now, before we go over techniques, it's important to understand how a jointer works. The in-feed table is lowered to the desired cut depth. As you pass the board over the knives, it removes material, allowing the out-feed table to support the workpiece. Note that the out-feed table does not fully support the material until it is completely flat. When we go over jointer technique, 
You'll see why this is very important to understand. Now let's look at the dynamics of the jointer. When you place the material on the table, you'll have the weight of the material and the friction against the surface to overcome. The force needed to move the material is in the horizontal direction. When the material contacts the knives, you will have multiple forces acting on the material in the vertical and horizontal direction. This means a little more force needs to be applied horizontally to counteract the knives and a small force down over the knives, preventing the board from lifting up. The deeper the cut, the more counter force you'll need to apply. Now, do you really need to know this to join a board? Yes, because the techniques we use must address these dynamics for the jointer to work properly. Before even turning on the jointer, we need to understand some basic wood terminology and properties, starting with the face. This is the wider, long grain section of a board, and the edge grain is the narrower, long grain section. Now let's look at the four main ways wood can warp, starting with a bow. This is warping caused along the grain on the face of the board, creating a shape like a bow. The side of the wood that is under compression is called the concave side, and the side that is under tension is called the convex side. Here's an example. I've drawn stress lines on this foam, which are straight and parallel to each other. When I bend the foam, you can see on the bottom where the lines compress closer together, and the top side they stretch further apart, called tension. This doesn't mean the bottom is always in compression or that it's always the concave side. I can bend the foam upwards and the compression is now on top and tension on the bottom, making the top the concave side. Next is crook. This is a long grain bow along the edge of the board. The principles are the same for a bow and a crook. One is on the face and one is on the edge. Then you have a cup, which is a bow across the grain, still having all the same properties of compression and tension, just across the grain instead of with the grain. Last is the twist, causing the board to rotate the face out of plane. Now let's look at grain direction. Notice that the cutter head of the jointer spins clockwise from the outfeed table to the infeed table. This means you want the grain of the wood going clockwise from the top to the bottom of the board as you pass it over the jointer. If you go against the wood, you'll get a much choppier cut with more tear out. Going with the grain slices the wood with less tear out. When jointing a bowed board, you want the concave side down. This gives you two points of contact. If you have the concave side up, you only have one point of contact, making the board unstable. Another really important dynamic with the jointer is you must not distort the board as you run it over the knives. This can happen when you apply too much downward force. Remember, the only downward force needed is to counteract the knives pushing up, which isn't a lot. And if you distort the board, it will just spring back to its original shape and not be flat. Now you've probably all seen these foam push sticks. They're practically in every jointer video and come with most jointers when you purchase one. Unfortunately, they are a big reason people have trouble getting boards flat. These pads require way too much downward force to move the material forward. And since we don't need very much downward force, any push stick you use should be designed to push the material forward like the one you see here. So I want to stop here for a second. I understand what this guy's talking about when, it, when he says um, too much downward force required with push pads, okay? Um, the problem I have is that with the system that he's got set up here, okay, there needs to be some pressure at the front of the board. He used his fingers, okay? We do not do that. And contrary to what he might be saying, the push pads that we use do hold the board pretty well without having to put too much downward pressure on it, okay? There's another type of push pad that I wouldn't mind getting. They're fairly expensive. I just haven't had the chance or the money to get them yet um, that we'll see in this second video that would work better. But I don't like this hooked end thing at all. I do like the hook on the end, but I don't like the fact 
that it's only so long. We've joined boards that are the length of this entire table. It just doesn't work with something like this. And I will not allow students to put their hand on the face of the board. There's got to be something between you and the board. So this is one of those situations where I disagree with what he's doing. I understand the theory behind it, but I disagree with what he's doing. So it's not going to happen in our shop. Okay, so let's keep going material forward and since we don't need very much downward force any push stick you use should be designed to push the material forward like the one you see here hooking on the edge of the board transfers the force horizontally and not down jointing is actually a finesse job a light controlled touch is the key here's how it should look start by identifying the concave side of the board then identify the face grain direction. This is done by looking at the edge of the board. The grain should be going down from the top of the board to the bottom facing the cutter head. Hook your push stick on the back end of the board and place your fingers lightly near the front of the board. You might have noticed I'm being very specific about the pressure. No matter what tool you're using, proper pressure is key. And it's not just about getting good results, it's also about safety. If you're pushing too hard or squeezing too tightly and something were to happen, all that force will be released, making it much more difficult to react and get out of the way of danger. So pay attention to that. It's easy to start tensing up when using machines. Now, if you don't feel comfortable putting your fingers on the board, that's okay. Just use a stick. If you watch the how to make a push stick video, then you know the push stick that comes with your table saw is no good. But instead of throwing it out, you can modify it to work here. You don't need a lot of downward force and the plastic will slide easily on the board, keeping your hands away from the knives. Then steadily move the board over the knives with your push stick while keeping slight pressure above the blade. Notice I'm not putting pressure on the outfeed side. That's because the board is not yet flat and you could cause it to twist or bend slightly. Plus, now that you've seen how the jointer works, you can see there's no reason to do this. But wait, there is a situation where this technique can be helpful when jointing a twisted board. To prevent wasting a lot of wood or ending up too thin, you wanna balance the twist, but this can cause the board to be unstable. Here's how to safely and accurately joint a twisted board. Once you balance the twist, move the edge of the board against the fence to help stabilize it and run it through the jointer. To ensure the material doesn't move, keep your push stick and hand in a fixed position through the whole pass. Taking a I've got to say something here. There's, there's a couple things he's talking about um, that bother me. When we face joint a board, what he's doing here will join the face. When we edge joint a board, anytime we use the joiner, we keep the board against the table and against the fence. What he was showing you earlier when he was face joining, the board was not touching the fence. It was only touching the table. We do not do that here. One of the reasons for that is it leaves exposed cutter head right here. In other words, we have a spring loaded guard on our jointer. And if the edge of your board is out here somewhere with this giant gap between the fence and the edge of the board, there's exposed cutter head right here. And I do not want that. I don't want any exposed cutter head when we're doing this. So um, that's kind of nuts the way he's doing that. But this is one of the reasons I'm showing you there's more than one way to do things. All right. So let's move let's the go edge back. of the board against the fence to help stabilize it and run it through the jointer. To ensure the material doesn't move, keep your push stick and hand in a fixed position through the whole pass. Taking a deeper cut on the first pass will help establish a reference surface quickly. Now that you have a flat reference on the bottom of the board, pass the board over the jointer as you normally would, keeping slight pressure over the blade. Now it's time to joint the edge of the board. One step I like to take before jointing the edge is to plane the other face of the board. This allows you to pick what edge you want to join and still have the right grain direction. You might wonder, 
Why can't you just joint the other side too? This is because the jointer makes a surface flat, but not necessarily parallel. The planer is designed to make a parallel surface referenced off the jointed face, and this is what we want. Now, before you joint the edge, you need to identify the grain direction. This is done by looking at the face of the board. Again, the grain will go from higher to lower, moving away from the cutter head. When you're checking the grain direction for the face, you look at the edge of the board. When you're checking the grain direction for the edge, you look at the face of the board. Now let's look at edge jointing dynamics. It's very similar to face jointing. You want most of your force pushing the board horizontally with only a little downward force to counteract the knives. The main difference is you need to apply enough force to keep the board flat against the fence. This is really important. The table is no longer the reference, only the fence. Ensuring the board stays against the fence is critical. You do not want to apply diagonal force from the top. This has a tendency to push the bottom away from the fence and can easily happen without you noticing it. You need to apply force in the center of the board against the fence. Here's how it looks. Start with the concave side down, place your fingers on the board in the center and safely above Okay, that is never going to happen in our shop. You will never have your hand on the face of the board at the leading edge. Not going to happen. Um, it's just a basic safety issue that we have. Um, just flat not going to happen. Not a good idea. You will always use a push pad there at the leading edge of the board. Okay. Of the cutter head, pressing it flat against the fence and push it over the jointer. If the board is really narrow, Use your push stick to feed the board and another push stick pressing the board against the fence before the cutter head. And that's how you accurately use your jointer. Now there is some skill involved in this process and the more you do it, the better you will get. Just remember, the right amount of force is key and a light touch is all you need. Keep the concave side down and the material moving at a steady pace. When edge jointing, Make sure you're flat against the fence, make yourself a good push stick, and don't use Okay, there's something else I want to say, or I just caught that, I didn't see it before, so let me see if I'm in the right spot. The right amount of force is key, and a light touch is all you need. Keep the concave side down, and the material moving at a steady pace. He says, keep the material moving at a steady pace. Okay, that's what's known as your feed rate. How quickly or slowly you move a piece of material over or through a cutter. That pace or that feed rate is critical in the finish that you get on any board for any cut. Whether you're ripping on the table saw, cross cutting in the miter saw, joining a face, joining an edge, cutting on the bandsaw, using a drill press, it doesn't matter. The rate at which you move a board over or through a cutter, or you move a cutter across a board, determines the quality of cut, okay? Consistent rate, not speeding up, slowing down, or stopping, um, is really important. And the way you know if you're going at the right rate, or the right pace, or the right speed, is generally by the sound the machine makes. If the revolutions per minute or the RPM or is bogging down, if it's, if it's dropping, you're going too fast, okay? You can also tell by the amount of pressure it takes with your hands to feed a board through a machine. And it's simply a matter of experience. It's something you're not gonna know starting out, but um, being paying attention to those things, the, the sound the machine makes, the pressure it takes to feed a board through is really important in determining and learning how to properly feed a board through a machine. So that, that's actually pretty important. When edge jointing, make sure you're flat against the fence, make yourself a good push stick, and don't use the foam pads. These tips and techniques should greatly improve your jointing experience. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you next time. So that's the first one. Um, I disagree with some things he's saying, and I agree with a lot of things he's saying. For example, we do use push pads. We don't use one of those big funky sticks, okay? So um, this next one, 
the second one in the series, number two, all right, um, is a little bit different. Um, it's a different guy. It's a different technique. But we'll, we'll take a look at some of the things he says and does and um, see if there's anything we can discuss on that one. A lot of woodworkers, when they're starting out, they go to the home center and they buy the pre-milled lumber, like this one by four. And that's very convenient, but it can get a little bit expensive. And you're kind of limited in the types of species you can use. If you want to broaden your horizon, so to speak, find a wider variety of uh, species you can build from, and perhaps even save a little money, you might consider instead going to buying rough sawn lumber like this. To bring rough sawn lumber like this into pieces you can use in your projects, you need to flatten it square it up and bring it to a consistent thickness. And that's where the jointer comes in. It's the first machine used in this process. The jointer is really a fairly simple machine. Take the guard off here and I'll show you. All there really is to the jointer is an infeed table, a cutter head here that has knives in it, and an outfeed table. The outfeed table is set so that it is exactly as high as the knives when they're at the highest point of their rotation. The infeed table is set just a little bit below the knives. So as the cutter head spins, the workpiece is fed across there. The knives take a little bite off the board, and that newly jointed face then rides on the outfeed table as you complete the cut. I'll put the cutter guard back on. I'll show you how it works. Look at the end of the board and you can see the gap between the bottom face and the outfeed table caused by the crown in the board. And listen closely, you can hear spots where the cut is lighter than heavy. That's because some spots don't make contact with the cutter head yet, while others do. After one pass, you can see where cuts were made and where there's still work to be done. Marking the face with chalk shows us better. Now I've got this one serviced pretty close. I've got one small area up here that still needs to be flattened out a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about that for the time being. I'll take care of that with a planer later. Now that I've got one face that is flat, I want to joint one edge so that it's square to that face. And that's the other thing the jointer does very well. This fence is set exactly 90 degrees to the cutters, so when I run my freshly jointed face up against that fence and joint this edge, those two surfaces end up perfectly 90 degrees to each other. As when jointing the face, you can hear where the knives cut the low spots and miss the high spots. So there I have two faces ready to go. This edge is flat, and this edge is at a perfect 90 degrees to this face. The next step in the process is to finish up the opposite face and the remaining edge. And those two jobs are done at the planer and the table saw. Right, so that was a lot quicker video. Um, he misuses a couple words here and there. He calls a face an edge and, and things like that. Um, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, so I, I hope that these have given you a little clearer understanding of the joiner. It's an absolutely critical piece of machinery that we use out in the shop. Um, it's our first step in squaring a board. In other words, like we said before, getting all the adjoining surfaces 90 degrees to each other, getting it to a consistent thickness so that the faces are parallel to each other, 
and getting the edges um, square to the faces and parallel to each other, okay? So the joiner is the first machine you use, all right? So a couple things. There were some people that came in late, and I want to make sure you guys know this, okay? So I'm going to go back to the home page here. And the week after Thanksgiving, okay, when you guys get back from Thanksgiving break, so it's going to be November 30th through December 5th or 4th, I'm sorry, that Monday through Friday, I will not be here. The subs cannot use Zoom. So I'm going to try to set up something different, but here's what you guys are going to need to do. Um, when you come in Monday, or you can even check next week sometime, I should have it set up. I hope I have it set up, but I'm not, I don't know if I will have it done in time. You need to check the announcements. That will tell you how to go about getting into, getting into class with the sub. Um, now, if I look at student view here, you'll notice it says home, announcements, modules, syllabus, grades, and Zoom. Okay. Um, when I go back to my view, this is what I see. There's one here called conferences, okay? Now, conferences takes us to a different type of online meeting. It's very similar to Zoom. And do me a favor, tell me in the chat if you have another teacher that uses big blue button. If you've heard of that or any, any of your other teachers have used that, I'd, I'd be curious to know. Um, so they do, huh? Do, Am I the only am I the only one that uses Zoom? <laughs> oh wow. Okay, so Michael says okay. So some of you haven't used used it before. My I'm going to try and set up big blue button. Okay. And my guess, I don't know how he's gonna do it. Um, I'm gonna make a suggestion or two to the sub, but I still all of them use it, huh, Haley? Do you, so do you guys like it? I mean, do you, do you prefer, does it make a difference to you whether it's Big Blue Button or Zoom? Do you like it or hate it? Really laggy? Okay, some, some of you probably like it better and some of you probably don't. Um, it's just a simple matter of preference. Yeah, somebody likes Zoom better, somebody likes uh, Big Blue Button better, okay? Um, and if I can't get that to work, most likely what's gonna happen is this. Let me go back to student view and see if you guys see this yet. No, you don't. Um, so most likely, if for some reason I can't get big blue button to function the way I need it to, most likely we're gonna use, I'll move this up, this little discussions choice here. I will move it up to where you guys can see it. So in other words, I can actually do this, watch. I'll make it visible. Well, I didn't make, well, I'm not gonna worry about it right now. Um, in other words, it would be visible in your view. It'll be down here probably right below Zoom, okay? And discussions is one of those things that allow you guys to have a conversation with each other and with the teacher. Let's take a look at this real quick, okay? So you can set up a group discussion or a class question board here. And what would probably happen is the, the sub would open up a group discussion at the beginning of class. Um, you would type your name in as you come in so they can take attendance. And then, um, and then the only thing I can think of to have him do is to um, type in or, or paste a link to a video or a lesson that you guys can then click on yourselves and watch or go to, okay? So I hope that makes um, sense to you guys. I hope you're not just confused like crazy. Um, but like I said, if you check the announcements, I will have it set up so that you guys kind of understand where to go and what to do, okay? Um, and I should, let's put it this way. I'll have access to my email um, over the course of the week. If you have problems or can't get in or there's issues, please email me as soon as it happens. Um, so that I can try and deal with it remotely. Um, and, and I'll do the best I can to make sure it works, okay? Um, so it's gonna be a bit of a, a mess, you know? Um, I haven't missed this much time in quite a while. So, um, but I'm gonna try and make it work the best we can, okay? So please, please, please 
when you come into class um, the Monday after uh, Thanksgiving break, check the announcements, okay? Please check the announcements. And you may notice another link over here that says discussions, or you may see, see something that says conferences. So if it's conferences, the guy's probably gonna use big blue button. If it's discussions, then um, it's gonna be a chat kind of thing. And my guess is um, he'll probably use big blue button. I'm gonna try and get it set up, okay? So um, that's kind of where we are, okay? Um, thank you very much for, for answering my questions on here. Um, I really appreciate it. It makes me feel not so lonely. This place is empty. It's like a giant cave. There's nobody here. So it's really odd. Um, anyway, um, today's Thursday. You guys have one more day of the week tomorrow. Tomorrow, I hope to be out in the shop um, starting on the table saw, okay? We'll start looking at ripping boards to final width and some of the other things that the table saw can do, okay? So um, that's gonna be it for today. Please make sure your name is typed into the chat window. Um, take care of yourselves tonight and I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow, okay? Bye, folks.